and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we're gonna be showing you a tutorial on how to set up and use all the functions on this Certina DS8 and the pressure drive movement that's powering it, which is a, a derived ETA movement. Now as you can see this watch has a 12 hour chronograph with this big second hand being the second hand of the chronograph, this small hand right here being the minute hand of the chronograph and the hours of the chronograph are displayed in this little disc by using this disc in this little window. The watch also comes with the uh, small seconds at 6 o'clock which is the seconds of the of the running time. You have the date at 4 o'clock and over here at 10 you have the actual uh, moon phase and it's a real moon phase that goes to 29 and a half days. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is because as you can see the chronograph hands are standing like this with the second hand being here and the minute hand being here and the disc is somewhere in between. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to align these hands, but the first thing that you have to do before you even try to align them is try to start and stop the chronograph and then try to reset it to see if someone maybe possibly forgot to reset it. So you started with this, you stop it with that and now you press the reset button. Now if the chronograph doesn't go to 12 with this hand being pointing right at 12 and this hand being at 60 and the disc being at zero, that means that someone misaligned the hands of the chronograph. That can happen when you change the battery while the chronograph is running. And actually when I received this watch and it's a loaner, the minute hand and the disc were actually misaligned. The owner didn't know how to fix it, so I told him I'll look into it and naturally there is a procedure for that. So to reset these hands, you have to pull the crown to the first position. And now as you can see this big hand just made a turn. That means that now you're setting that hand up. And to set it up you use the lower button. You can move it in one second increments or if you press and hold it's gonna spin until you release the button. Like this. So now we want to bring it to 12 and I nailed it from the first time. When you want to set up the minute and the disc, they're actually connected, you have to press the upper button because that's going to toggle between the seconds hand and the minute and our disc. So when you press it, when nothing moves, it means that now we're setting up this. So if I press it again, this moves. So now we're setting up the seconds. We press it again, nothing moves, we're going to be setting up this. And now pressing the lower button, and as you can see, the minute hand is moving in one minute increments. Since it's directly connected to the disc, the hour disc, you're gonna have to do full rotations until you spin all 12 hours. Uh, luckily you can do it easily by pressing and holding and the watch is gonna move in one hour increments once it speeds up, like so. So you wanna stop at about 11, like so, and now use one minute increments to get a, directly to zero. As you can see the hour disc is slowly sliding into position and the minute hand is gonna stop at 60. There. Now we aligned the chronograph. To complete the procedure you simply push in the crown. Now you've told the watch that this is actually the zero position of the chronograph function. So now since we're talking about the chronograph I'm gonna show you how to use it. This is a regular a split chronograph with first and second place. So you can start it with the upper button, you can stop it with the upper button and you can reset it with the lower. You can also do the split times. So you start it with the upper button, pressing the lower button is gonna freeze the hands but the chronograph keeps counting in the background. And to unfreeze the hands you simply press the lower button again like so. And you can do the first and second place. So while the chronograph is running you press, uh, when you have let's say two runners, when the first one goes through the finish line you press the lower button, when the second one goes through the finish line you press the upper button. Now once you've written the time of the first runner you press the lower button, it's gonna show you the time of the second runner. Once you've written that as well you simply press the reset button again for the chronograph to jump to zero. Now the minute and hour disc didn't move because we used the chronograph for just a couple of seconds. But these would naturally move as this hand complete, completes the revolution, this is gonna move by one. When this completes a revolution the disc is gonna move by one. And that's it. So now let's show you how to set up the time, the date 
and the moon phase display. And the first thing that you want to do is set up the moon phase followed by the dates and by the time. So to set up the moon phase, what you have to do is pull the crown to the second click, to the second position. Once you do that, pressing these two buttons is going to move the moon phase counterclockwise and clockwise. However, it has so many little increments that pressing it looks like nothing is moving, but it is. So it's much simpler to simply press and hold and then you're going to see the, the disc spinning. As you can see, it's going counterclockwise. And the best way to set up this is to set it up on one of the dates when you have either a new moon, full moon, first quarter or second quarter. Because as you can see, there's a small needle that indicates what day of the lunar cycle, that's 29 and a half days, you're currently at. So you want to set it up on a very precise day. So let's say you look up on Google when you have full moon, you wait for that date and then you can precisely set it up like this, like on, a, on day 15, for example. like so. Now we have the full moon. Now there's another needle right here that's indicating whether it's a full moon, the first quarter, second, or a new moon. And you can see it, this one indicates the days and this one indicates what phase the moon is currently in. So like I said, you want to toggle that when you have a, a full day. So let's say fifth day, 10th, 15th, 20th, because that, that way you're going to be the most precise. Once you set up this, I don't think you have to touch it again for about a hundred years, at least I think so. Once you've completed the setup of the of the moon phase, you simply push in the crown. Now, my advice is that you set up the date. You set up the date by pulling the crown to the first click, to the first position. However, in the first position, when you're setting up uh, the date by turning counterclockwise the crown, don't set it up for the date that you're currently in. Set it up for one day before. So let's say if we want to set it up for the 10th, we're going to put it to 9th. Why? Because this watch doesn't have a 24 hour indicator. So we don't know if the current time is AM or PM. So now once we've set up this, uh, we can set up the main time and then we're going to move by that one date by using the hands themselves. You have the seconds hand indicator right here and theoretically you should wait for it to come to 12 and then pull out the crown so you can sync the watch to the atomic clock. But we're not going to wait for that so we're just going to pull the crown right now. Like so. Once you pull the crown the seconds are going to stop and now we can set up the main time. And now we're going to use the hours and minutes to switch to the 10th. That way we're going to know when it's midnight or a.m. and p.m. So as you can see, this is the midnight, I mean the noon of the 9th. So, so we have to complete another revolution. There. So now we know we're at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And let's say we want to set it up for, I don't know, 6 p.m., 6.40 p.m. We have to complete another revolution because this is now noon. So we're just going to go to 6, 6.40 p.m. Once you want to, you know, sync the time with the atomic clock, you simply push in the crown and the watch starts operating. Now this might seem very simple, but I've seen people who really own watches for a very long time and even they mess up the dates and correlation of the AM PM because they set up the time first, then they set up the dates and then next day the date doesn't change at midnight but at noon. So you always have to take care of that. Anyways, that's it when it comes to this tutorial. I explained pretty much everything. And like I said, the most useful thing is probably going to be the reset of the hands because some people are just going to wear them with the hands misaligned thinking something is broken, but it's not. It was just a reset procedure that you have to do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.